All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tian. Um, well, Tian An Mac. I go by Tian. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself. Uh, like Yuan said, I'm a uh, technologist at ThoughtWorks for the past five ish years. I've been in the industry for about 10 something odd years. And uh, I have to say, though, in my 10 plus years of experience uh, working, um, other than than dealing with merge conflict, which I think is one of the toughest thing to do in uh, work. The other hardest thing is people. Not just like interacting with them because you know, it's always fun, but it's also just working with a mindset and convincing people and then working with them. Let me ask you a question. Who here has been part of an agile transformation? Okay. How many here try to foster a DevOps culture at your, at your workplace? Okay, that's quite a bit. Now, how many of y'all that worked the first time? Damn, I was hoping someone would actually have their hands so I can talk to them afterwards. Because it's actually really difficult. And I'm sure everyone here has experienced the, all the difficulties. And um, this presentation is really about how I, some, of the, some of the pitfalls I've gone through, and then so hopefully you won't repeat the same mistakes. And in the interest of, me, of shaking things around, so you know how DevOps days is a bit more different than the others, I'm going to start a presentation with a little story. And like this slide says, it actually, some, some of these actually happen in real life. Others are kind of fiction. It's up to you to figure out which one is fiction. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, maybe not that in the beginning, but uh, let's say we're talking about this, this uh, startup company, fairly successful. They're e-com, uh, they have a proof of concept working, but they have a very small user base, and their goal is to increase that user base uh, for the next release uh, for the holidays. So, some of the characters. You have a CTO. You no, know, it's a usual, you know, your team lead, the app team, which includes the business analyst, quality analyst, um, project manager, and then the, the, the famous ops team that everybody talks about. So, here's how, this is where the story starts. We're now in the middle of a meeting. Uh, the CTO and the team lead are talking. And he's asking this famous question. Why are we six months late? They are supposed to go time to market, and they're late. And they're like trying to understand why this is not good. You know, money, 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 blah, 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 buzzword. And the tech lead, okay, don't worry. We, we just had a retro with our team. And here are some of the not so great, and the not so great column, the, the one that this sticks out the First one, Deployments are long and painful. Um, it doesn't work all the time. Things are breaking all the time in a QA environment. It's, it's tough, right? Um, there's a lot of back and forth between team and ops to get the app working. They forget this flag, this, that, that, you know, things like that. And another one is like, it took a very long time to get a QA environment. And our production, we only have like two servers right now. And if you want to scale to like a thousand, you know, ten thousands of users using it, we all know that two, two servers is definitely going to be enough, right? So let's stop here for a second. How common is, I, I think everyone's seen this before, right? Yeah. So, you know, like I said, based on a true story. I've seen this happen too. So the CTO is like, I get you. Don't worry. Don't panic. We're going to work together, and we're going to make this, make this work. So first thing, to deal with the infrastructure problem, our ops team have been working with, this, with, uh, with a cloud provider. So we're, we're going to, your team is going to be the first one to go into the cloud. The, 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 the no, team is like, yes, cool new tool, cool new tool, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and, you know, and, to, sweeten the, and to sweeten the pot, we, I'm even going to create a, a special team for you to help you move to, to migrate your app to the cloud with all these new shiny toys. Create this new DevOps team. Uh, spoiler alert. This is not a good way. This is not going to work. Okay? This is a spoiler alert. 
So yeah, so you have this amazing DevOps team that's creating all these amazing automation. They're doing their thing, a little corner. The ad team is really happy because all they have to do is now it's basically the developer can concentrate on writing code and then push the code and automatically somehow magically ends up on a cloud, on a server, it's working. The QA team is happy, they're working properly. The ops team is happy because you know, they, they can move things and then they're deploying things. They're practicing. Deployments are not painful anymore. Everything's looking good. Fast forward, fast forward. All right, it's release day. Everyone's crossing their fingers. All right, please work, please work, please work. Click, oh, sweet. It works, we're live, we have production. Let's open up, let's open up to all the users. Yay, cool. Celebration, and oh, everything's fine, the end. I'm kidding. Since when does a production de deployment at that big scale works, right? So the team goes out celebrating, yeah, we just got them live, let's all have drinks and everything, all great. And then an incident happened, obviously, overnight. Sometime, somehow, in the middle of the night, the app just stops working completely. Pagers are going off, emails are flying, CTO is calling, hey, this is not working, we're losing a lot of money. This is really, really, really bad. So the ops team are like, okay, let's look at the problem. Okay, let's open the log. Null pointer exception line blah, blah, blah class. What is this? Like, what? So they, they spend like two hours trying to figure out, what is this? And then the guys talking to each other, calling, hey, do you understand? No idea, no idea. Two, three hours later, you know, we're talking about go live, they're losing money, so they're freaking out. But they finally figured out, one of the, one of the database server ran out of this space. We didn't consider this much traffic, so the whole thing went down. Easy peasy, fix it, script, delete. Um, and then the next day, they added monitoring, and then they added some alerts and all these great stuff. But unfortunately, as they push the production, more and more problems uh, appear. And then the ops team are always like, I don't get this. this is the, these are weird errors. And then the devs are like, I don't know. This, you're the one that's pushing it and everything. So it's, just, it's not looking good, right? Like the, the whole the, the platform was great in theory. But then nobody can understand. They're always, talk, they're always fighting and bickering. So the team, the, the team leader's like, all right, you know what? All right, let's try to figure out what went wrong. So in an agile fashion, they're doing another retro. And this time, they're inviting both the ops team and the dev and the app team working together again and trying to figure out, OK, what went wrong? Let, let, let's, let's talk about this. So again, on the what didn't go so well, uh, one of them is like, I have no idea what the app is doing. All I do is download the artifact and push it. And conversely, the app, the dev, the app team, they're like, I don't understand what these terms are talking about. This auto scaling group or uh, elastic load balancer voodoo weird, Whoa. and then the developers like, I get these like mailbox full of alerts, and this means nothing to me. And then the, you know, the ops team, like, I don't know what these null pointer stack exception class line 5,200 something. It's all weird. So again, how, who's, um, how common is this for y'all? Hmm? Right? The, I think the one that I can associate the most is the inbox flooded with alerts. Uh, who here has a filter in their inbox for all the Nagios alerts? <laughs> and that grows on, on an exponential basis, and I'm sure by the end of this talk, you probably have a thousand more, right? The, these are anti-patterns, right? And the biggest issue here that we can see is that the fact that they're not talking to, uh, talking to each other, right? So remember how I was saying, spoiler alert, it's not working? That's because you have a team working here a team working there, and things are just passing around, and they rely all on automation, on the tools, and it's not working out. So, how do you solve this? They're still losing a lot of money, the CTO is unhappy, and I think they all want to keep their job to you know, keep on having fun, right? 
So they're moving the DevOps team into the app team. And the transition was really difficult. Uh, at first, you know, you have they still start, they're trying to say, okay, what is this new thing? Um, okay, auto scaling group, I don't get this, uh, these all weird things. But as they work together, they start collaborating more each other. The development team working with the ops team, they're getting to learn the better best practices. They learn about TDD, test-driven development, that could be done in their infrastructure. They learn to test their um, containers. Conversely, the ops team is actually teaching now the development team how to use these automation tools, how to use, say, for example, Terraform. It's not this voodoo magic anymore. It's actual code that describes what, your, what your infrastructure looks like. So then they work with each other, and then they understand, and they understand the code to the point that they are so confident, that even the developers now are confident to debug issues in production. And they even go on rotation now. So even the, even the developers are now on call. So should something go wrong, should, should something happen in the middle of the night, they can respond to it because they know exactly what's happening now. And, then, and the ops team will also know exactly what's happening. Like, I know what your app is doing. And then this is what this weird error message points to this. I sort of know. It's a big collaboration. And then, you know, they, and then everything is awesome. They have pipelines now. They have a dashboard that says everything is green. It's great. Yay. So now it's the real end. So out of this whole story, what, what, what did we learn out of this? Other than Murphy's Law says that if you do a Big Bang deployment, everything's going to go wrong. Because let's face it, shit happens. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. So first of all, the DevOps is a culture. If you notice in the story, I didn't talk about any tools, I, except for the end where I talk about Terraform. But the whole time, it's about the collaboration. It's about trusting the team and empathy. The dev team now understands the pain of the ops teams happening. And the ops understands the, the, uh, the problem. And they have empathy. And then they also trust on their tooling, on their automations. And also really just to build um, and a collaboration. So there is an, the, another great thing about DevOps culture is what we call the no blame culture. Um, let, me, uh, let me take an example. Did everyone, uh, anyone here heard of a, of a certain GitLab incident that happened about last year? Just to refresh your memory, what happened is GitLab, uh, during a, a backup, um, accidentally, at 4 in the morning, an engineer accidentally deleted 500 gigs of production data. 500 gigs, that's a lot of zeros, a lot of data. So that's bad, right? <laughs> but instead of blaming that developer, they were actually very open and transparent about it. They even had a live, a, a live broadcast on YouTube going through exactly what went wrong and, and identifying what the problem is. And even today, the engineer that, that accidentally did that RM-RF uh, is actually now, from what I've been told, it's been promoted, it's doing really well, and it's still there. So it's about, it's about collaboration and empathy. And you, know, you don't blame. <coughs> And it's also about the, uh, you build it, you run it, which is a quote that the CTO of Amazon, which means if you build your app, you are responsible for it. So the development team now should be able to take over the operational responsibilities. So should something go wrong, I know what's happening. It's like, ah, not my problem, not my problem, it's your ball. And then they play hot potato throwing the ball around. Not very um, constructive. <laughs> And last but not least, um, it's about the self-managed team. Um, it, mostly it's about reducing the, the um, external dependencies. So if you notice here, when during the story, nothing in the story talking about having three hour long phone calls, um, negotiating, telling, okay, why you push it to production, and then write this crazy document outlining line by line what I have to do, what do I have to do, what we call a run book, and then what we, and should something go wrong, what are the steps? No, there's none of that, because 
they reduce all that so that the team itself can deploy to production. And a true, uh, you know, the ideal state is that a developer can just click on a button just because, because pushing to production, it shouldn't be a big, big ceremony where like, oh my gosh, we have to allocate 48 hours start and to reduce downtime, we have to start the deployment at two in the morning on a, on a Sunday because let's all face it, I would rather be with my friends having a drink at two in the morning instead of being at home, miserable in my PJs, hoping that everything goes right, right? We, we, we want to have our lives. So this is all cool and great, but my, the title of my talk is how to do this. How do I do this? So start small. Don't start changing at the same time everyone. That, that will never work. We as humans, we are a very um, um, habit-focused um, personality. We always like to do our same thing. So to change a mindset is really difficult. I'm like, I, like I asked in the beginning, how difficult was it to, to, change, to go from an, a waterfall to agile? It's slow, it's long. If you start small, with, just with your team, then you, can see the, then you can see the success, and then from there you can you know, increment slowly. Um, automation. Now I can throw in some tools and everything, but automation is probably the biggest part of making this work. And, you, and that's one great way of starting small. If you don't have automated testing, start, start with that. If your deployments are manual, you have to copy CP this, CP that, SCP this, all that. Maybe make it easier. Write a script to do that. Use Terraform to provision your servers. Use Ansible, Chef, whatever tools that you think that your team is going to like, use it. Uh, another one that I really like to do is, uh, as part of the external dependencies, if you do have external dependencies, say for example, your, uh, your company, for example, still has a QA that's completely separate, invite them to your stand-ups, to your daily meetings, so then you can associate a face with an email. And believe me, it's amazing how the fact that you get to know someone, you can get requests done a lot faster instead of opening a fit ticket like, hey, do you mind doing this for me? Like, um, just do it? Like, yeah, sure, no problem. I've done that multiple times. Life hack. And last but not least, and this is the, probably the, one of the toughest ones to do, it's to start up a DevOps guild. What I mean by guild is that just the concept of having people sitting together and sharing. And it's not just limited to just developers or operations, but everyone. Everyone can contribute. Quality, uh, you know, quality analysts, business analysts, XD, anyone really, and it, it, it's just the the concept of just sitting together and then sharing things. Like, hey, I read about this new tool today, and do a presentation. Or if your team is working on a really cool feature, just present it, and then maybe it's like, hey, we're trying to save the solve the exact same problem. Let's work together. So that way, everybody can work together. And that's how you start that DevOps culture. Uh, and before I finish, I just want to recommend some books. I believe our uh, friend previously uh, talked about these two books. Um, I really personally like the Phoenix Project a lot. It's a, um, it talks about a company that is going through a DevOps culture. It's actually more of a, of a fiction book with a lot of uh, theory behind it. But if fiction is not what uh, your cup of tea, the handbook itself is more the theoretical part of, the, of uh, what's happening in the, dev of the, of the Phoenix project. And they go really uh, well hand in hand together. So that is all. If you have any questions, that's my email address.